Welcome to the Minister's Papers. Today we're going to talk about panel modulation for your vehicles. Welcome to another episode of Playing With Paint. Today we're going to talk about panel modulation. Well, how I conduct panel modulation is where I attract attention to each individual panel. That is, I have a mid-tone and a highlight in the center of the panel, leaving the recesses in darkness. I'm going to show you exactly how to do it on this Land Raider. And that's coming right now. Alrighty, let's talk about panel modulation. The first thing I'm going to do is heavy blue gray over black primer. Now you can do heavy blue gray or you could do any lighter color. I'm just using this as an example. In fact, in the end, this tank is actually going to be a Space Wolves tank. So it's going to be that light Space Wolves blue uh, that a lot of people are accustomed to. But for the purpose of this video, I wanted to show you what panel modulation is. Now, panel modulation is where I'm highlighting the center of each panel, leaving the recesses or the edges of the panel darker than the center. Now, that's not to say you can't wander over to the uh, edges of each panel, but most of your passes are going to be in the center of your uh, panel. So this way you can bring up and make it brighter um, uh, than the rest of the panel. So this way it, it kind of just accentuates the middle of the panel. It gives it an outline. It really makes the figure pop. If you paint it all one color, it's kind of dull and it loses a lot of its uh, intensity. This way, uh, you have a different variation. You, you're creating, you're playing on light and shadow. Now, panel modulation doesn't really necessarily play into uh, where the light is coming from. So this is not a zenithal highlight kind of procedure. This procedure is more like just playing around the rule of cool, so to speak, uh, where you want to hit those lights and dark darknesses. Now, for panel modulation, it's kind of easy. The light is in the center. The end. There's no ifs, ands, or buts around it, but the best way to get better with an airbrush and knowing where to put highlights and shadows in is to try your hand here at panel modulation. And you kind of, well, that looks cool, and you go for it. Now, if you do make a mistake, it's quite easy because the paint is so thin to just reprime it black. As long as you're not putting thick coats of black onto your miniature, you can have and do this many, many times without having to strip any of the paint uh, if you feel you've overdone it. And that's the only thing that could be um, negative about this process is that you can go overboard with the panel modulation and then what you're left with, well, what you're left with isn't much at all because it all seems uniform within its color. So you have to leave some of the darkness in it. So all you have to do is just outline where each panel is um, and delineate where you want to bring up the most highlight. Now, in addition to panel modulation, the rule of cool plays into this. And what that means is wherever you want to totally and, and totally like bring out an element of your miniature. For me is the Aquila, I wanted that to be brighter, the little emblems, I want that to be brighter as well. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it several passes with this lighter gray color in order to bring up each element. Now, let's talk about paint. 
It's really not as important which paint you use to do this process because all paints will have a similar effect as in you're going to create lights and shadows using the color of your choice. That's why it really doesn't matter which color you choose. You can do the same for each and every one. There are different kind of primers where you may want to consider for different kind of colors. For example, painting everything uh, purple or pink before hitting everything with red might help you. Purple especially with red I've found to create a nice shadow. So in other words, what you're going to do is that if you could have purple primer, go for it. But if you don't, then do a thin layer all over coat with purple and then start doing panel modulation, the same thing that I'm doing here, with your uh, reds. And this way it'll make it pop. Uh, there are different colors you can play around with base tones, but this is not a video based on what base colors work really well uh, over other colors. That is a completely different video uh, that I plan to do in the future. So as far as panel modulation, you see me hitting each panel right now i'm hitting a 45 degree zenithal to see what would happen and the reason why i'm doing this to the side sponsors and not doing the panel modulations for this one is because i intend to add some dark or muddy effects towards the ground of the miniature so i want the, the top of the miniatures to actually shine through now either way will work Either way will work. But people have asked me many, many of times, what do I do to make uh, the panel modulation, the shadows really, really pop? This is one thing that you can do. Now, I have FW Inks Payne's Gray. I love Payne's Gray. That would work amazing when doing panel modulation. In fact, I highly encourage you to pick up a bottle of FW Inks Payne's Gray because when you do it over white, it simulates black. It does wonders when it comes to edge highlighting as well, which I'll do a video about that as well. And to airbrush, wow, oh, this airbrush is a dream. Okay, so I did heavy blue gray, which is a light gray. And next I'm going to do these Payne's gray from the FW inks to really accentuate the parts that I really want to pop. Here's where you get that really high contrast. And you're going to see it's almost going to turn white. And I am not shooting white through that airbrush uh, whatsoever. Again, this is Payne's gray. But in comparison to the black, it makes it feel like white. Here is where I'm going to really pick out the details. Now, I have some Forge World pieces, and I'll zoom in, uh, that I attach to this and make this a bit wolfy. I didn't over wolfify it, but you see how I'm just picking out different elements that I really want to shine. I want the ornament ornaments to really shine, so I'm going to hit each one of them, and now what it's going to do is going to create a glow. And it looks like a glowing effect for each one of those items, like almost a halo for each one. This is great to do OSL lighting effects as well, as to create creates a glow. If you want to do pre-shading with this, uh, if it was OSL, and then you want to hit a yellow ink on top of it, we'll create that glow as well. But really, panda modulation uh, can be as simple as that. <laughs> as simple as that. Love, love, love Payne's Gray. But you see that? It's really adding that glow. And this is what I'm going to do throughout the entire uh, miniature, picking out different areas. The rule of cool. Does light really work like that? Not really. <laughs> but does it make certain elements pop? As an artist, when you're painting these miniatures, you're going to want to take the person that's going to look at the miniature and control where their eyes are going to be looking at in what order. That means to draw attention to things, you have to have a high set of contrast. This does wonders to create the variation of contrast. It makes that what we call in the uh, industry here, pop. That high contrast going almost straight to white. And you can see that Payne's Gray really does look like white, especially against black. And inks, generally, inks really 
I mean, they really, really go through an airbrush really well. If you've never worked with inks, I highly recommend it. I like FW inks and I use it all the time. Okay, so here I'm hitting the lights as well, really making things glow and pop out. And of course, there's going to be a glow uh, with the lights and I wanted to do it for this Land Raider. So I'm just gonna hit that. Watch how I steady that airbrush. It's a two-handed process, not just one, because I really want to hit it dead on. Controlling your hand movement is just as important as mixing the paint correctly, because if you can control the uh, limit, the where you're going to put your airbrush and uh, what designs you're going to create with the airbrush, the better the end result will be. Everything that you put down onto this miniature is not an accident. It needs to be intentional. So that's what I'm doing, making intentional strides uh, to play with these paints and to bring up and make uh, you look at certain things. Like the turret, I want you to be able to see that because I'm going to put uh, glowing monitors in there. And that's pretty much it. All you have to do is highlight the center of each panel for panel modulation to really make those shadows uh, deep in the shadows and make the miniature pop. Again, this is in black and white. I'm gonna paint over it and make it blue and you'll see the final results in the pictures. See you on the outro. Well, I hope you found panel modulation interesting and educational and hopefully you try it on your vehicles. If you like this video, like, share, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you next time on the Miniatures Paintbrush.